Yeah, um, today I wanted to do a history on pop lock in, in Los Angeles. I remember the first time I actually got into pop lock and I went and tried out for the gung show, which was the gung show is when where I seen Tookie on there before and me, my, me, my brother Keith Fisher and Seymour, we went and tried out for the gung show and I was doing a little pop locking, locking and crip walking. But today I wanted to do a documentary on pop locking in Los Angeles. Some of the best pop lockers I have ever seen in Los Angeles was a guy named T Tiger, Tick and Dave, Little Steve, Boogaloo Hook. I never really seen Kiko, but I heard he was a good pop locker. And we had actually had competitions and everything. We was up at uh, Edison Junior High School, and they had another guy named John Boy. John Boy, one of the best robotters in Los Angeles. I don't know what happened to him. It was three. It was two up, three of them. Him and his two little brothers. But these pop locking man, it took over California in the in the eighties. But I noticed that we all used to try to pop lock. And I remember they had a place called the workshop that was on Western. And Western had a thing, Western and close to Manchester, and they had a, a, a club called a workshop, and everybody used to go up there and, and pop lock and do their thing. But I remember one time I was in, um, I went to Venice Beach, and I didn't know that they had a big pop locking scene. And man, we used to try to find places to pop lock. And I remember one time I went up to Venice Beach, man, and I mean, it was like about 100 or 150 people around the pop lock and scene right there on Venice Beach, right there by the, uh, where they be doing roller skating and all that. And I remember we ended up pop locking and there was a guy from my neighborhood named Scrap. Scrap was one of the best pop locks I've ever seen, but it was another guy. I haven't never really seen this guy again. His name was Tuck. This dude was so nice and pop locking, man. I mean, he he beat everybody that day, and I didn't even really want to do anything because this dude was bad, bad, bad. And I always wanted to talk about pop locking because I remember when T Tiger, Boogaloo Hook, and a couple of his guys they met a guy at the workshop, and the guy at the workshop promised them that he would take them to New York. But I didn't know that it, this guy was running a scheme on those guys. And it kind of like broke their spirit. And it kind of like set them back for years. Because they really thought they was going to go to New York and, and, and be a pop locker, be on TV. This guy was a good, he promised them everything. He said he worked for CBS. And he kind of like infiltrated the culture. But at the, at the same time, uh, I think me and a guy named Fuzzy, we used to... Uh, we used to be having a pop locking contest inside of my yard on 68. And on 68 and Central, we used to have a pop locking contest in my yard and everybody was around the, my yard because we had a guy named Dallas. He came from Dallas and he was one of the best pop lockers. And I used to have T-Tiger, uh, 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 Dallas and Fuzzy in my yard, pop locker, and T. Tiger was more like a bully pop locker. He, he, he a cap jokes and he would pop on you. Then they had another guy named Cobra that was supposed to be pretty good, but T. Tiger would want to go against Fuzzy, but he want to fight all the time after the pop locker. So I used to just make them stand in the yard and take their turns. And the whole the, the Edison used to be up there, and they used to be uh, around the, uh, the my yard over the fence, and they go at each other for for hours. And man, it was some of the most brilliantest pop locking I ever seen. Then T Tiger ended up coming up with a group. He had a dude named Pookie, uh, Lamont, uh, Boogaloo Hook, and they had T Tiger. And these guys were some of the most dedicated pop lockers in Los Angeles. And they came off of my, over in my neighborhood because we had a, a, a teacher up at uh, Edison that did uh, arts and dancing he used to have pop locking and there was another little dude named Shane Shane had hurt his neck in uh at, 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 at uh, Roosevelt Park playing football Shane pop locked pretty good but I just wanted to talk about some of the guys man that that uh actually 
was into the courtship. Now, T Tiger, he's T Tiger was from 5'9, and I seen T Tiger pop against dudes that was at Roosevelt, I mean that was at Bethune Park, and he used to be up there on his home turf. And if you on T Tiger home turf, he gonna talk crazy and he gonna have his guys looking crazy. So I remember one day him and Cobra was up there popping against each other, and uh Cobra Cobra got out real good, and you know they it was it was it was that was it was cool, right? But I also remember when Tick and Dave was one of the most brilliantest pop lockers I ever seen. Man, this dude had a cold, some cold moves, man. And um, I call myself being a pop locker a little bit, but you know, you know, I really wasn't that good. But I mean, one night they took me to this party, man, and um, it was over there on um, 50, 56 in Vermont and Hoover. It was a little young kid's party, and I went with T-Tiger, and I went with Lamar Boogaloo Hook. And man, we and then we get in that pop lock, and everybody pop lock, and I start doing this certain kind of pop lock. I got some moves, man, that these moves is from way back, but I haven't had a chance to do them on TV, but I uh, I still, I still want to bring them out. I still want to do them, because when I did them that night, man, I mean, the whole party just got the, ah, and I always wanted to, to do the moves, but I'm gonna show you a little bit of the move. The move was called, it was called the uh, the, uh, the, the, the the it was called like it's called a bougie move. And I used to go like this, I used to hit it this way, and I used to hit it this way, and I used to do the one hand and the other hand. And man, I mean, people, man, used to go crazy over those moves I had. And I haven't never really had that much excitement in the party before. But one day I will be able to show you these moves. But uh, the, let's talk about. T Tiger, T Tiger, the Boogaloo Hook, and, and his crew. I actually seen T Tiger, Boogaloo Hook, uh, 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 and it was another guy named Lamont. He was real good. I think that was his name. He was bad, man. Man, we had some bad, bad, cold pop lockers at Fremont, man. And they used to do the halftime shows. You know, Fremont had one of the best bands. And Fremont Band was known for a lot of things, but they, the band teacher end up going to Locke. That's how come Locke end up having the best band. But T. Tiger and, and Lamont and them used to pop at halftime in the football uh, games. And then they used to pop Locke at halftime in the basketball games. But one time we went up to uh, Locke and uh, T. Tiger and uh, Lamont and his crew, they was going against the guys at Locke. Now, Locke had Kiko, Lil Steve, and all them. And, man, at halftime, man, they were so excited. They was throwing down, boom, 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 boom. And they was hitting these moves, and they was doing the, the worm. They was doing all kind of moves, man. And I used to just be uh, just be looking. I used to be like, man, them my boys, man. Them some, them some cold pop lockers, right? And uh, I just wanted to bring this pop locking thing to front because I've been looking at the uh, websites, and I see a lot of pop locking. But I wanted to just bringing light on those guys, man. And a lot of those pop lockers, they old now, but maybe one day we will be able to bring them guys and talk about the pop locker scene in Los Angeles. Because I remember the first time we went to Uncle Jam's Army, we was doing a dance called The Freak. And The Freak was when you get between the girl legs and you, you jamming. And this was a thing, man. And we we got, we met a lot of girls doing that, man. And I remember the first time I was at Uncle Jam's Army, and this was in uh, on at the... Uh, it wasn't at the Grits where Ice-T used to be driving down the street in his Porsche. This was at the one downtown. I think it's on 12th Street. And um, we was uh, in there pop locking and everything. And it's the first time I ran into the Harlem Crips. The Harlem Crips was outside. Hey, hey, we was in there dancing, jamming. And somebody say, hey, man, you know the Harlems is outside, man. And we went out there, man. And we said, I know, the first time I seen the Harlems, and it was this big old dude. He looked like a big old Sasquatch. His name was Big Bob. And I ended up running into Big Bob in 4800. And it was me. It was two Bobs in the cell. No, it was two Ken Dogs, two Fishes, and Big Bob in the cell. But Ken Dog ended up later escaping from a 4800. But Big Bob ended up being my celly, and I was telling Big Bob about the time I first seen him. He was a big old dude, like 300 pounds with a big old beard with a big DC jacket on. And, man, we was in there trying to pop lock and doing the freaking, and everybody say, man, them Harlem's outside. It was about 200 of them guys, man. And we all kind of, like, went to the front, and that was the first time I ever seen Big Bob from Harlem. Now, this dude, man, was big Already in his 40s, and we was younger guys, and then I said I ended up noticing, really knowing Bob later on in the game. 